Uh, Chris, you had many years of experience with UNRWA and you presumably know Gaza very well. So I want to ask you a question now that's on many minds. Um, it seems like the James Bond-like uh, Hamas command center that we saw depicted in that famous uh, Israeli army animation a few weeks ago, the multi-layer command center uh, with conference rooms and big weapons storage depots and, and tunnels hither and, and, and to, uh, was not under Al-Shifa Hospital. So is that command center under one of the UNRWA schools, in your opinion? <laughs> Ali, you're, you're, you're great. Thank you for that question. Um, <laughs> strangely enough, I mean, you probably remember from 2014, um, again, there were, there were tunnels under UNRWA schools. And I can tell you from, you know, the truth, as far as I'm aware of the truth, we had no idea of that. Hamas, strangely enough, didn't sort of phone us up and say, hello, we'd like to build a tunnel underneath your school, or hello, we'd like to build a, cent- a thing underneath your food distribution centre. This was a secret operation. You're not but there, tell- there weren't, but just to be clear, there could have been tunnels going under because as far as we understand, there are tunnels everywhere in Gaza, but you didn't, yeah, have, but I'm saying you didn't have tunnels didn't coming it. up into UNRWA schools. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, we would definitely have heard about this. I mean, I don't know whether you know, but there was an American program called the OSSOs, um, Operation Support Officers, something or other. And basically, when there were all these problems, in inverted commas, with UNRWA neutrality, there was a big textbook issue where we had to use PA textbooks. And the Israelis would sort of point out that there was this depiction of Israel or there was a map without Israel on it. Um, In response to that and many other staff neutrality issues, for example, teachers posting um, stuff on um, on Facebook postings which glorified terrorism and war and violence and was allegedly anti-Semitic and all this stuff, um, a big thing was set up with UNRWA. And under that programme, each facility was visited by an international staff member who inspected it. I'm pretty sure it was every month. And they would look for jihadist murals and you know this that and the other and as far as i'm aware in the from 2007 to 2019 my 12 years in unra there was never a single incident of you know a sort of tunnel that came up in an unra school or anything like that so i, I think i can with my hand on my heart dispel any suggestion that that took place there was the three incidents in 2014 i'm sure you remember ali where um, we found weapons components in our schools. Now, you remember the 2014 conflict happened during the summer holidays, and our schools were shut up, and they were mothballed for the summer. And in that context, where there was no UNRWA staff there, um, militants did get into the school and hide rocket components there. And when we found out about them, and this wasn't publicised much at the time, though I did tell journalists, um, we phoned up the Israelis, the Americans, and the PA, those were the three. And, you know, Mark Regev and co. gave us no credit for that. When, you know, we were taking a real political risk. You know, a war was going on and UNRWA with its unarmed staff and, you know, 13,000 of them or 12, whatever it was in those days. And, you know, 1.5 million refugees. We said to the Israelis, we have found weapons parts in those schools. What did the Israeli Hasbara, you know, propaganda machine do? It accused us of collaborating with terrorists to fire rockets into Israel. I mean, and that 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 was part of a, a, a huge campaign of lies and disinformation that was mounted by the Israelis. I mean, I always remember the Jerusalem Post. There were seven of our schools that were hit during 2014. And after every strike, the Jerusalem Post would phone me up and say, Mark Regev just told me, or you know, somebody in the Israeli sort of you know information department told me um, that there were militants in the schools. And of course, in the chaos of war, you know, we're humanitarian workers. We couldn't, I couldn't say, you know, I can categorically say that was not true. But I did phone up our director in Gaza and say, did you get any reports from any of the staff of militants being there? And he said, hand on heart, no. Um, It wasn't until after the war when we had a board of inquiry, you know, where the guns had fallen silent and we could investigate it in the cool light of day. 
And we found that that was not true. <laughs> you know, very largely there were no militants in our schools. So there was a huge, huge campaign of disinformation and lies put out about us. And I was dealing with it. I remember one occasion I went on, um, is it NBC's Meet the Press or Face the Press program? And Netanyahu was, influenced, was interviewed just before me. And when I came on air live, standing in front of a you know, camera broadcasting live to America, um, the host of the programme said, I'd now like to show a video of rockets being fired out of an UNRWA school. And I said, listen, guys, I can't see this. And it's really unprofessional journalism of you to expect me to comment on a video I can't see. But the interview went on and I said, if it's true, we'd condemn it. And, you know, blah, blah. You know, we take steps to make sure our schools are neutral, etc. When I, my interview is over, I went down, I called up Abba Adnan Abu Hasna, a wonderful um, program um, public information officer in Gaza. And he said, I saw it. I can tell you that was the, and I can't remember the exact school, but it was a PA school. So I went, got back to the program in Washington and said, I would like categorically to deny that lie that you've just broadcast that was given to you by the Israelis. And actually they were forced to admit that it was untrue. And not long afterwards, the presenter of that program was reassigned somewhere else. And I think it did make an impact, but it was a rare example of where in the heat of war, a humanitarian organization was able to correct some of the disinformation. But, you know, this is a classic one, the, the video scanning the cross section down Al Shifa, and you get this sort of Dr. No kind of boardroom with a flat screen television. I mean, I'm afraid to say that the Israelis are the victims of their own propaganda, because it's now, you know, this was a causus belli. This was a reason to, to attack a hospital, right? So, you know, and the Americans, I think even Biden sort of said he'd seen evidence and, you know, this, that and the other. And, you know, and it had the sort of, you know, the Israelis you know, put it around. It was part of their, you know, hats off to the Israeli Hasbro machinery. They got this message out there that there was a command and control center underneath this hospital. And that's why there couldn't be a ceasefire. They had to attack, blah, 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 blah. Well, you know, as part of what I hope will be a war crimes investigation by the ICC when this whole thing is over. I hope that the commander who, and they will know, the Israeli army, who is responsible for planning and executing the attack on our Shifa, I hope that he, you know, there'll be an arrest warrant or he will be forced in some forum, and I hope it won't be an Israeli forum, um, to, to account for his decision. I mean, after 2014, we had, I think it was called the military, the MAG, it was an office in the IDF, which sort of did investigations. And I'm afraid to say, you know, it never got to accountability. Um, you know, the Israeli investigations that took place after 2014 were not independent. Um, they were not thorough. They did, I don't think they would meet international standards. But now we have the mechanism. Now we have the ICC. It's investigating. And I hope that the whole Al Shifa episode and each and every individual that was killed there, that all of that will be thoroughly investigated. And if there is proof that there is a criminal in investigation and a criminal trial, individual criminal responsibility for whoever was responsible for that attack on the Al Shifa hospital. Thanks for watching this video. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, hit like, leave a comment. These engagements help us with the YouTube algorithm and it helps us to get around Silicon Valley censorship as much as possible. It does make a difference. You can also support our journalism by going to electronicintifada.net and clicking on donate now. Thank you.